This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The Fuss Testing Level 200 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle fulfills in trusted application development. It also provides an overview of fuzz testing, which is a key verification technique required by the Microsoft SDL. Addressing this subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. In this presentation, we will complete an overview of the Microsoft SDL and cover the topic of fuzz testing, different approaches to fuzz testing such as dumb fuzz testing and smart fuzz testing, along with strategies for different application types will also be discussed. Finally, the Microsoft SDL requirements and recommendations for fuzz testing will be presented. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, and executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement rather than disrupt the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements, exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, Architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyze with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is a quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities, mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information 
in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is optional, operational and used by the customers. In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on fuzz testing and how it can be used to uncover vulnerabilities in applications. With respect to specific phases of the Microsoft SDL, this presentation focuses on the verification phase. A majority of all application vulnerabilities that exist today are due to developers failing to validate untrusted input into an application. Fuzz testing is the process of creating and inputting malformed data into an application and observing the application's reaction to such malformed data. If an application fails due to processing the malformed data, then a potential vulnerability has been discovered. The types of vulnerabilities discovered through fuzz testing are generally very serious in nature. Buffer overflows, integer overflows, and denial of service vectors are examples of vulnerabilities that can be identified through fuzz testing. These vulnerabilities can be leveraged by malicious users to assume control of the application or crash it entirely and deny access to legitimate users. Fuzz testing is a key testing technique of the Microsoft SDL that yields several benefits. These benefits will be discussed later in this presentation. Fuzz testing is targeted towards application code that reads and interprets data structures. This type of application code is often referred to as parsers. In this presentation, we will discuss how to fuzz test file format parsers, network protocol parsers, and other types of parsers. The fuzz testing process may require additional resources and commitment from your application development team. As you formulate your fuzz testing strategy and execution plan, you may want to identify any additional resources that may be required in order to execute your fuzz testing strategy and consider how these additional resources may be obtained. Engaging in this thought process as early as possible will afford you greater time to request and obtain additional budget for the purposes of executing a fuzz testing strategy should additional budget be required. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation focusing on fuzz testing, are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. Each application makes certain assumptions about the data it receives from users, such as the format of the data, the type of the data, and the length of the data. Fuzz testing is a process for testing those assumptions, and more importantly, it is a process enabling developers to discern how an application reacts when such assumptions are inapplicable or violated. An application may expect input data to contain all numerals, such as in the case of an application reading financial data or telephone numbers. Users who abide by these rules are called valid users. Fuzz testing, however, systematically simulates a user who does not abide by these rules. The specific type of user fuzz testing is employed to simulate is a malicious user. As with any security testing process, fuzz testing has its advantages and disadvantages. One of the key advantages of fuzz testing is the types of security vulnerabilities that are identified through this process are usually very severe in nature. Examples of security vulnerabilities that can be effectively identified through employing fuzz testing include, but are not limited to, buffer overflows, integer arithmetic errors, denial of service, and other vulnerabilities that could allow a malicious user to assume complete control over an application or render an application inaccessible by authorized users. 
Another advantage of fuzz testing it is, is that it is a highly automatable testing process. The creation and inputting of malformed data can be automated with tools that will be discussed later in this presentation. In some cases, even the analysis of an application crash due to processing malformed data can be automated. A key disadvantage of fuzz testing is in order to identify security vulnerabilities, the application needs to crash, raise an unhandled exception, or error out in some unexpected fashion due to processing malformed data. This means that any vulnerability that does not result in an application crash or error condition typically cannot be identified using fuzz testing. Examples of such vulnerabilities that will not be identified through employing fuzz testing include, but are not limited to, are cryptographic and information disclosure vulnerabilities. This is one of the reasons why the Microsoft SDL employs several testing techniques instead of relying on a single testing technique in order to better ensure that applications developed with Microsoft SDL are safer and more trustworthy. Lastly, fuzz testing should not be used to replace other assessment activities and certainly is not to be considered a silver bullet. There are two main methods for fuzz testing applications. The first method is called dumb fuzzing. With dumb fuzzing, completely random data is inputted into an application and the reaction of the application to the random data is observed. This type of fuzz testing may not necessarily provide useful results since most applications expect data to be in a certain format. If the malformed data is not presented in the expected data format, then the malformed data is usually rejected by the application. That is, in this scenario, the rejection of the malformed data by the application does not yield any detrimental impact to the operation of the application itself. With that said, there is still considerable value in employing the dumb fuzzing testing technique, and therefore this technique should still be employed. It is perfectly reasonable to assume that a malicious user may input completely random data into an application to compromise it accordingly. As such, dumb fuzz testing is aligned with the primary objective of the fuzz testing process, which is to simulate a malicious user. However, it is critical to understand that dumb fuzz testing should not be the only fuzz testing technique used. The other fuzz testing technique is called smart fuzzing. Rather than inputting completely random data into an application, smart fuzz testing consists of inputting specific values leveraging knowledge of the underlying format and or the expected behavior within an application. Fuzz testing tools that work in this fashion are able to create malformed data that will more likely be accepted and parsed by an application. The smart fuzz testing technique will greatly improve the chances of identifying security vulnerabilities as compared to dumb fuzz testing. Please note that one fuzz testing strategy does not replace the other. Both dumb and smart fuzzing can be very effective in certain situations. Application development teams should employ both fuzz testing techniques. As indicated in the previous slide, the difference between dumb and smart fuzz testing is that dumb fuzz testing involves randomly malformed data that is sent to an application. No regard to expected data formats is given with dumb fuzzing. In contrast, smart fuzz testing involves expected data formats that are preserved where only certain values are changed to create malformed data. Suppose we have an application that reads telephone numbers in the format shown here. Let's see the difference in malformed data that these two fuzz testing techniques produce when testing an application. With dumb fuzz testing, random data is used regardless of the expected data format. As shown here, none of the malformed data produced through dumb fuzz testing conforms to the expected data format. Most applications, when it encounters data that is not formatted in an expected format, will reject the data. Dumb fuzz testing tools may be able to randomly create data in the expected format, but the chances of this is rare. With smart fuzz testing, Malformed data is created while preserving the expected data format. Changes to specific values are made to create malformed data. For instance, numerals could be replaced with letters or even different character sets, such as Unicode characters, 
As shown here, the malformed data created through smart fuzz testing preserves the expected data format, where only the data itself is modified. Before we discuss common fuzz testing application attack vectors, such as file format parsers, network parsers, and other code that read data, let's look at the general methodology behind fuzz testing. In order for a malicious user to attack an application, they need to be able to interact with the application in some fashion. Specifically, malicious users need to be able to provide some type of malformed data to an application. Therefore, the first step for fuzz testing is to determine all possible vectors or entry points that a malicious user can use to interact with an application. Examples of entry points may include files that are read from file systems and data read from network sockets. These will comprise the set of entry points that will be fuzz tested. Architects, developers, and testers who are familiar with an application will be able to build such a list of entry points. The next step is to rank each of the entry points enumerated in the previous step by privilege and accessibility. This enables you to effectively prioritize the entry points that need to be fuzz tested by impact and probability of attack. Threat modeling, which is discussed in a different presentation that is part of this series of field-ready content and demonstrations specifically for developer audiences, is a good way to systematically create this prioritization. It is important that you perform this step to better ensure that the entry points at, at the greatest risk of being compromised will be fuzz tested. It is very important to mention that as a general security best practice, any untrusted entry point into an application should be fuzz tested. While the topic of prioritization of entry points has been discussed, it is not implied that lower priority entry points should not be fuzz tested. Fuzz testing requires the creation of thousands of different malformed data variations. Each of these malformed data instances are inputted into an application via the highest risk entry points and the application's reaction to these malformed data inputs is observed. To help automate and the creation and inputting of malformed data into application, it is recommended that fuzz testing tools be used whenever possible. Available fuzz testing tools will be discussed later in this presentation. Any unexpected or unhandled crashes to an application caused by processing malformed data should be rigorously analyzed by developers and testers. Error conditions created from processing malformed data often indicate the presence of severe code vulnerabilities. Finally, vulnerabilities should be fixed and then tests should be executed again to better ensure that the vulnerability is fixed. It is also important to rerun tests since a specific crash may be blocking other issues from showing up until after it gets resolved. File format fuzz testing targets application parsers that read files and the data contained within those files. Files are a common source of input into an application and are frequently targeted by malicious users. Therefore, if an application supports any file types, each of those file types should be fuzz tested. In order to effectively fuzz test files, the first step is to identify all the file formats supported by an application. Application architects, developers, and testers are optimal resources to leverage in order to produce a list of all supported file formats. For each supported file format, a library of valid files should be created. These valid files will be used as templates for creating malformed data variations. The Microsoft SDL recommends that at least 100 different valid files be collected for each supported file type. The next step is to create malformed variations of those valid files. Due to the large number of malformed files that need to be created through fuzz testing process, it is recommended that application development teams build tools to automate the creation of the malformed files. The final step involved in fuzz testing file format parsers is to input each of the malformed files into the application being fuzz tested and observe how the application reacts. Again, using or building a tool that automates the inputting of malformed data into an application is recommended. 
Let's now see a demonstration of the file format fuzz testing process. In this demonstration, you will see a brief walkthrough of file format fuzz testing and how this verification technique can be used to find serious vulnerabilities such as buffer overflows. Let's begin by opening the application that will be file fuzz tested called readfile. readfile.c is a sample C application that implements two functions. One is called readfile say hello and the other is the main entry point that calls readfile say hello. This application accepts one argument from the command line, a file name, opens the file, reads its contents, and echoes back the file contents. Let's now take a look at a sample file that we will input into readfile.c. The file samplefile.txt contains the string Kevin. When this file is passed to the readfile program, the contents of the file is read and printed back with a greeting. Let's see what happens when we run read file and give it sample file.txt as an input. And as you can see here, read file read the contents of sample file.txt, which was Kevin and printed out this greeting message as shown here. Let's now take a closer look at readfile.c. The readfile say hello function accepts an argument called file name which specifies the name of the file to open. It will allocate 256 bytes of buffer space on the stack, open the given file, and read the contents of the file into the buffer name. Finally, a greeting message is printed that echoes back the contents of the file read. Do you see any vulnerability with this code? A stack-based buffer overflow occurs at the call to fscanf. The function makes the assumption that any data read will be less than 256 bytes in length. If a malicious user passes read file a file that contains data that is greater than 256 bytes, then a buffer overflow attack will be possible. Let's now take a look at the file fuzzer program that we'll be using to attack readfile.c. The file fuzzer application creates a series of malicious files called maliciousfile.txt. The application will write a series of A's from 0 to 300 and run read file with this malicious file. This fuzz testing program will fuzz test read file with 0 A's, then 10 A's, then 20 A's, and so on until it reaches 300 A's or until an error is detected, whichever is first. Let's now run filefuzzer.exe and see what happens. As you can see, filefuzzer ran with 0 A's, 10 A's, and so on until it re reached 270 A's and, and uh, we hit this debug here.
If you look at the registers window, notice how the ECX or counter register and the ESI source register registers have been overwritten with 41 41 41 41, which is in fact the letter A expressed in hexadecimal format. This was due to the unbounded copy or buffer overflow from the call to fscanf and readfile.c. As you have seen, fuzz testing can be an effective method for identifying security code vulnerabilities in applications. Fuzz testing, however, does not replace other testing methods, such as security code review. Remember that fuzz testing requires an application to crash or fail in order to detect vulnerabilities in code. There are certain vulnerability classes that do not cause an application to crash, such as information disclosure and cryptographic vulnerabilities. Fuzz testing in these cases would have been ineffective. Therefore, it is important that application development teams use fuzz testing in conjunction with other security verification techniques. Fuzz testing is a good way for application development teams to systematically identify vulnerabilities in their application implementations. Fuzz testing can be highly automated and typically the vulnerabilities identified through fuzz testing are very serious in nature. If an application reads data from the network, then the network parsers for that application should be fuzz tested. For instance, an application that reads application layer configuration data sent from a network should have that network parser fuzz tested. Fuzz testing network parsers can be performed in three different ways. The first method of network parser fuzz testing is to create malformed packets that conform to the data format expected by an application, and then send those malformed packets over a network to the application. As shown here, with this technique, a fuzz testing tool creates some malformed data and sends that malformed data directly to the application over a network. The second method is to record valid network packets, malform the captured data, and then resend or replay the malformed network packets to an application and observe how the application reacts. With this method, testers first record valid network packets sent to an application using a tool such as a network packet sniffer. The captured data is then malformed in some way and resent or replayed back to the application. The last method of fuzz testing network parsers is to create malformed data network packets on the fly. With this method, valid network packets are intercepted by a network device, such as a HTTP proxy, malformed in some fashion, and then forwarded to the application. As mentioned earlier in this presentation, as a general security best practice, any untrusted entry point into an application should be considered a candidate for fuzz testing. Each of these entry points should be prioritized in terms of impact from attack and probability of attack. Again, a good way to determine this is through threat modeling, which is discussed in another presentation. All entry points with high priorities and risk potential should be fuzz tested first before ones with lower priorities. Applications may implement custom code that read, consume, and analyze data from untrusted sources. Since reading data from untrusted sources introduces risk to applications, these other types of parsers should be fuzz tested. Examples of such code include, but are not limited to, ActiveX controls, mobile code, and code hosted in a browser. Command line arguments and user interfaces are good examples of code that may be at risk and should be fuzz tested accordingly. Due to the large number of malformed data variations required for fuzz testing, it is important to use tools. Several tools are available to help application teams perform fuzz testing more effectively and efficiently. The first tool is Microsoft App Verifier. Microsoft App Verifier is not a fuzz testing tool, but rather a tool that helps developers analyze code at runtime for unmanaged Microsoft Win32 applications. Microsoft App Verifier can be used to identify runtime conditions 
that can lead to vulnerabilities, such as heat-based overflows, memory leaks, and access violations. All of these conditions can create security risk for applications. Applications should be monitored by Microsoft App Verifier prior to fuzz testing. Microsoft App Verifier is also capable of recording anomalous conditions observed during the fuzz testing process. The Microsoft SDL Book Companion Disk contains a simple file fuzzer called MiniFuzz. This program provides an example of how to fuzz test a file parser through dumb and smart fuzzing. Finally, several freely available tools from third-party security companies can be downloaded. A search for fuzzing tools using a search engine will provide helpful information regarding available tools. Applications developed with the Microsoft SDL must adhere to the following fuzz testing requirements. The first requirement is that fuzz testing must be performed on retail builds of an application. Since fuzz testing is a systematic way of simulating a large number of actual attacks against an operable application, it is important that fuzz testing be performed on applications as they would be run by customers. This means that fuzz testing should be tested on the same binaries that will be delivered to customers, that is, once again, testing retail builds and not debug builds. Retail builds are sometimes referred to as release builds. While all entry points into an application can potentially be attacked by malicious users and should be fuzz tested, there are certain types of entry points in Microsoft's experience that are particularly at risk. They are files that are read by application, remote procedure interfaces, and ActiveX controls. Any application that contains these types of entry points must have these entry points fuzz tested. Once again, as previously mentioned, it is a security best practice to fuzz test all entry points. In addition to fuzz testing retail builds of an application and at-risk entry points, anytime an application is updated or parsers are re-engineered, that application must be re-fuzz tested. The purpose of this requirement is to help ensure that new vulnerabilities have not been introduced into the application implementation. The final Microsoft SDL fuzz testing requirement is that for each file format supported by your application, the parser for each of those for file formats must be fuzz tested with at minimum 100,000 different malformed files. Whenever a vulnerability is found, the count must be reset back to zero, and another pass involving 100,000 different malformed files must be completed. The following tips can be used to help you perform more effective fuzz testing exercises. The first recommendation is to keep all malformed files that cause an application to fail. These files will be useful in helping developers reproduce any vulnerabilities found through fuzz testing malformed data instances and remediate vulnerabilities accordingly. Furthermore, these malformed files can be integrated into regression tests to ensure that specific vulnerabilities do not manifest in future versions of the application. The next recommendation is to perform network fuzz testing on private subnetworks. Network-based fuzz testing can often produce large amounts of traffic or can cause network service outages. Production networks and other critical systems should therefore be isolated from network-based fuzz testing exercises. As effective as fuzz testing is, it should always be used in conjunction with other assessment techniques, such as security code review and code analysis. Remember, no one security assessment technique can identify all possible vulnerabilities and therefore should always be used in conjunction with other security assessment techniques. Fuzz testing applications, due to the large number of tests required, can become very time consuming, iterating through hundreds of thousands or more files. For example, may require significant effort, resource, and time. To help reduce the chances of fuzz testing efforts blocking or delaying other verification processes, separate machines should be dedicated for fuzz testing efforts. Additionally, as previously mentioned, the fuzz testing process may require additional resources and commitment from your application development team. As you formulate your fuzz testing strategy, 
and execution plan, you may want to identify any additional resources that may be required in order to execute your fuzz testing strategy and consider how these additional resources may be obtained. Engaging in this thought process early as possible will afford you greater time to request and obtain additional budget for the purposes of executing fuzz testing strategy should additional budget be required. Finally, all application errors generated by fuzz testing efforts should be investigated thoroughly. Errors produced through fuzz testing are often very serious in nature since these errors commonly can enable severe attacks from malicious users. Application development teams should take care to carefully investigate all errors and vulnerabilities identified via performing fuzz testing. This concludes the discussion on fuzz testing. A majority of today's security vulnerabilities are caused by applications not validating untrusted inputs. Failing to validate untrusted inputs can lead to serious vulnerabilities, such as buffer overflows, integer overflows, and denial of service. Fuzz testing provides a systematic process for identifying certain types of vulnerabilities in applications during runtime. Fuzz testing can be performed in two different ways, dumb and smart. Dumb fuzz testing is an iterative process that takes a set of valid inputs into an application and mutates that data by randomly changing values within it. The malformed data is then inputted into an operational application and the application's reaction to that malformed data is observed. If the application crashes or another unhandled error condition is observed, then a potential security vulnerability has been discovered. Developers need to rigorously analyze each crash to determine if actual security vulnerabilities exist. Oftentimes, the malformed data produced by dumb fuzz testing will be automatically rejected by applications since that data will most likely not conform to expected application data formats. This means that large amount of effort is commonly expended to create malformed data instances that yield minimal potential for identifying security vulnerabilities. This characteristic of dumb fuzz testing is a major criticism of this fuzz testing technique. However, sending random data to an application in the same fashion as performed via dumb fuzz testing has merit and therefore should not be excluded from fuzz testing plans. Typically, the more effective form of fuzz testing is smart fuzz testing. Smart fuzz testing applies the same approach as dumb fuzz testing, except the format of the expected data format is preserved. With smart fuzz testing, only specific values within the data are changed. This improves the chances that the malformed data will be accepted by the application and processed to create an error condition. While smart fuzz testing will generally produce better results, it is important not to discount the usefulness of dumb fuzz testing, or any other security assessment te technique for that matter. Fuzz testing should not be used to replace other security assessment techniques and certainly is not to be considered a silver bullet. One major benefit of fuzz testing is that the types of vulnerabilities that are identified through the security assessment technique are often very severe in nature. Buffer overflows, integer overflows, and denial of service vulnerabilities are examples of the types of vulnerabilities that can be identified through fuzz testing. Another benefit is that fuzz testing is highly automatable. Developers will still need to analyze crashes and other error conditions. However, the effort of creating thousands and thousands of different malformed data instances and then inputting that malformed data into running applications can be automated. One disadvantage of fuzz testing is that it can only uncover security vulnerabilities that cause an application to crash. Information disclosure and cryptographic vulnerabilities are examples of vulnerabilities that are generally not detectable through fuzz testing. Additionally, applications developed using the Microsoft SDL must adhere to certain fuzz testing requirements. Fuzz testing requirements, such as testing retail builds of applications and performing fuzz testing on certain types of application components, are put in place to help application development teams to develop safer and more trustworthy applications through the Microsoft SDL. The fuzz testing process may require additional resources and commitment from your application development team. As you formulate your fuzz testing strategy and execution plan, you may want to identify any additional resources that may be required 
in order to execute your fuzz testing strategy and consider how these additional resources may be obtained. Engaging in this thought process as early as possible will afford you greater time to request and obtain additional budget for the purposes of executing a fuzz testing strategy should additional budget be required. Lastly, the insight gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated into its SDL, and more specifically, in this presentation which focused on fuzz testing, have been shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecurityllc.com.